Hello everybody, welcome to Nego Terra Odyssey. How is everybody? Oh, I love this keeper of journeys. It reminds me of Gandalf so much. And within this kind of spectrum and this idea of every single day, we can initiate some kind of spectacular journey. A quiet walk through the woods where we have these fantastical musings on, you know, artistry and where we want to go, places we want to visit. Yesterday, my mood got completely switched to really excited and passionate about my future. Walking in the nature center, simply thinking about where I want to go to next and talk about synchronicities in the universe helping us out. I talked about this, I believe, in yesterday's video about um, Dan Levy and um, his travel show that he's doing. And I started to think about Scandinavia and some of my origins and really wanted to go to Norway and the fjords and um, to Bergen and uh, bring my, you know, bring my son and let him really see what's around there too. Cause we're always talking about Norway and my friend Jeannie is going to like a clan meeting of the Davidsons in Scotland. And I literally, we could literally just jump on a boat and go from Norway to Scotland and, um, meet up. And I just started to put the pieces together. Then when I came home, of course, that travel show was on and I watched, uh, they had Finland and they had Sweden for midsummers and um, all of these things and it just made me think I can journey anywhere that I want to go in my mind and make plans and lift my mood and my vibration simply by doing that and you've heard about that making digital plans too it, I can't tell you how quickly digital can turn into reality when Ian started talking um, a couple months ago about going to England all I did was look at my Stonehenge cup and some of the rocks that I'd gathered. Funnily enough, these calcites came from this beautiful bluff. They had natural calcites growing in them. When we got out of the car, we were just literally just picking them up by the armful. And that was one of my best days. It's so incredible. It wasn't like the food or anything it was like being in this place like none other on this high bluff with the wind and seeing the sheep and seeing people walking their dogs and it just looked like England and it felt like England and it's like it was one of those moments where I just wanted to cry because travel does that for us it expands our mind it expands our palate it expands our visuals our you know just everything and it's like I also I get really like massive chills all over it's such a there's so many ancient, beautiful, druidic things around where we were going to that I was like, whoa, the vibes of it all, you know, just really fantastical, which brings us into this keeper of stars. Keeper of stars are wishes, what we hope to do and become and achieve and go and, you know, rel what we would relish and think was magical. And yesterday it was so funny that it was just very simplistic. I was talking about the Finnish people and Scandinavians being so happy because what they cherish is family and friends, nature and animals. And, you know, it's like, how simple is that, you know? And when I think about it, that is when I am also at my happiness, when I'm with friends and family, when I'm in nature, when my animals are around me. So really by simplifying it and boiling it down to the wonders of nature and the magic of it, like incredible. As soon as I walked in the nature center yesterday, falcons, just up in the trees and I was like ah oh, and everybody had their big equipment out and everything and it was like uh and I could see all the deer prints and it was utter magic which keeps which keeps which brings me to keeper of surrender surrender to beauty and to rest and it almost looks like an elfin cocooning you know surrender if you're having moments where you're having musings Tap into that, jump into that creativity. Don't think you need to be somewhere else or producing something. Just do it for yourself. Let it unfurl, let it ripen, and then just watch. It's like the essence of magic really takes place there because we're allowing space in between. We're not pushing ourselves. Today was really nice when I woke up, I had all kinds of options and I'm like, oh, I could go to the 4.30 um, comedy show. They sent me some tickets. I could... Um, just literally do readings or crafting or whatever I want all day. And I thought, Ooh, the new moon is coming in. And I was like, so I just started to think also, never mind about things I want to bring in. What do I want to release? So I would love for you to ask yourself on this day, 
the new moon falling on the 10th is ideal to say, okay, this is excessive. I don't need to watch this much TV or devour this much food or whatever it is. Let me, let me find a balance because we can reset our habitual patterns on a new moon. I feel like in a much easier way, it just flows. We decide, Hey, this is a distraction or this is excessive. This is unnecessary. I, I release it. I don't need to buy something every time I leave my house, you know, that sort of thing. And I used to have this impulse, oh, if I'm already out, I'll just pop in here and do this and that. But again, it's unnecessary and it, it and I don't need anything else, you know. Decide to decide what's important and, and have your focus be on that. So my beauty says what you're meant to hear today. I hope you all have a great day. Love and light.